Here we are, it's early in Chiang Mai. Just woke up from the hotel and we're in search of what the Thai people call in English, the long necks. So we're gonna got some tips from some locals and we're gonna go check out some different villages. We have a couple different options. Hope we get to go check check these people out and, and see uh see how they're doing. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. <laughs> You ready, Pinu? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in those mountains is the village of the Long Necks. Out of all the times I've been to Thailand, I've never come to Chiang Mai before. So this is pretty cool. After asking around a little bit, we got a tip to go to the top of the mountain that overlooks all of Chiang Mai. It's there, people said, that we could find the way to the Long Necks. The tip was wrong, so we decided to stop and get something to eat and discuss plan B. Never ever do I drink coffee, but for 50 baht, it's all right. Driving around for hours, I ended up falling asleep for plan B. But luckily, we found an elephant trekking company and they knew exactly what we were looking for. P. Lloyd said that she had come and saw the long next years ago. That's why she wanted to come was to see them again. But she did not come to this village. She went somewhere else where they were away from their village and it just wasn't the same. So this is it, the original village of the long necks where they actually live. Ban Tong Duong. I'm really looking forward to seeing the elderly lady that I saw on National Geographic before years ago. There are seven different villages within this mountain hill complex and supposedly the long necks are the furthest from the entrance. If there's a place that you'd see a tiger walk by, this definitely would be it for sure. How crazy is this too? These homes right here, you can rent them like a hotel. You can stay in the Long Neck Village overnight, kick it with them. How cool would that be? I noticed the whole village was set up for farming. They have these chickens and everything else that you can imagine to keep themselves self-sufficient. Check out some of these primitive, if you will, old school, whatever, farming tools. As we got through a couple of the villages, we still haven't seen any of the long neck people. Just a lot of regular villagers. Some that even dressed the same, but did not have the long necks. So I guess this is what scarecrows look like in Thailand. They're <laughs> only two or three feet tall. Here with Mopright. Sawadee Cup. And just like that, we found the village. These people are actually from Burma, now called Myanmar. They were persecuted for their way of life and they came to Northern Thailand to escape. 
practicing this lifestyle is called padang. The actual coils around the necks are called wing. When your government makes something that you do illegal and you still do it, that makes you pretty cool in my book. If you have rings around your neck, you're a rebel. Their village has everything except electricity. They spend the day turning their persecution into profit by hand making souvenirs for visitors to come by. Saudi cup. We're here in Thailand at the village Ban Tan Wong. Check this out. I was really hoping to find the very famous village tribeswoman I saw in National Geographic. Hello, Saudi Cup, Matu. Matu was very humbled and graceful and took pictures with us. Their village is beautiful and a sight to see, whether it's their original home or not. I mean, check out this bridge. It's made out of bamboo and the leaves of palm trees. Cool, huh? Looking for Rambo as I'm walking around. The rest of the villagers may not have the long necks like the Padang, but they're very unique in their own way. What an incredible experience it was to come and check out this culture. I'm sure if you're in Northern Thailand, they'd love for you to stop by and share it with you as well.